Before there were network switches, we all worked with Ethernet hubs. And Ethernet hubs were unique because you could plug into an Ethernet hub and you could hear every bit of traffic and see every packet that was flowing through that hub. A hub is nothing more than a, a multi-port repeater. So it became very easy if you ever needed to do network analysis or if you ever needed to capture packets from the network, you simply plug into the hub, no extra configuration needed, and you could see everything. But of course, in the world of switches, that is not the same thing. Now we plug into a switch port. The only thing we're able to see are broadcasts, multicasts, and of course, anything that might be directed to your specific workstation. If two other devices were communicating through the switch, we have no way to see that simply by plugging into a switch connection. And that's why most switch manufacturers design a capability built into the switch called a port mirror. It may be called something else on your switch. It may be called a span. It may be called a port redirection. But it is effectively exactly the same thing. We're taking traffic that's going through the switch, and we're taking a copy of that traffic and sending it off to another port somewhere else on that switch. There are many different reasons you might want to do this. One is for doing protocol analysis, examining what's happening with the way that applications are communicating. If you're in the case of using a security device like an intrusion detection system, you may want to get a copy of the packet so you can see if there's any security issues happening on the network. And these days, you have things like stream to disk technologies that capture every packet coming through the network and saves them on these massive hard drives arrays so that you can effectively rewind what was happening on the network to see what might have occurred in the past at a packet by packet level. This is not always easy to do, however. Not all switches allow you to do a port mirror. Sometimes it may only allow you to do one or two port mirrors simultaneously. Sometimes there's no option at all. You may have no way to plug in and do a port mirror on your switch. So you'll have to look at your switch manufacturer's specific instructions for that model to determine, can I do a port mirror on the switch? And if I can, what are the limitations associated with that? Here's how the port mirror works. Let's say we have a workstation that's communicating to a database server, and we would like to see the packets associated with the communication between those two devices. We would also plug into the switch then a protocol analyzer, and we would tell the switch, if you ever see anything coming from the workstation to the database server, send that over to the protocol analyzer. And also in the other direction, if you see something coming from the database server to the workstation, also send a copy of that to the protocol analyzer port on the switch. So now when the workstation sends that traffic through, the switch knows to duplicate that traffic and send it to both of those devices. Every time we see a packet go in, it's going to duplicate that traffic. And of course, since we told it to send it the other direction, anytime the database server sends that information, it will also send a duplicate out to those two devices. That way, these two devices are still able to communicate to each other. But behind the scenes, we now can send all of that traffic to a protocol analyzer and help troubleshoot response times or application problems we may be having between those two devices. You'll have to check with your switch manufacturer to make sure you can do this. But you can see that that port mirroring capability gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to troubleshooting these problems on your network.